Let's open our Bibles tonight to 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and 9 and the 10th verse. The Bible says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and thy hand be with me, and thou would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Hallelujah. How many of you know God will grant you if you come with an earnest heart, earnest prayer? God looks not in the outward appearance. God looks into your heart. How many of you know if your heart is right with God, God through the blood of the Lamb, God, you can pray earnest prayer unto God. It is not how you are, who you are, where you have come from, but if you can make earnest prayer unto God, Hallelujah. God does not have favorites. God does not have favoritism. Hallelujah. Whoever makes tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Earnest prayer unto God. There is a supernatural power that will rise on your situations, on your life. This is a night of God's impartation. This is a night of God's power. Those who believe there is an impartation of the anointing of God, you will carry a fire, you will carry an anointing, you will carry a power of God over your life, over your generation. God is about to put his fire on your belly. God is about, yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is one area I. In our lives, we feel powerless. At least few people sitting in this place think that you are powerless in the area of finances. Pray people who feel powerless in the area of finances. God is able to touch you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is going to be a burial tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Every powerless attitude of your lives is going to be buried tonight. You are going to rise up as a man of valor, as a woman of valor, as a man of power, as a woman of power in the area of your finances. If you believe it, put your hands together. Yeah. Say, I'm a man of power. There is a lie that spreads that financial gain and financial blessing is only for people who are only for few people but that's a lie of the enemy if you have received Jesus Christ into your heart if you are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ if you are set apart through the power of the Holy Spirit if you are given into sanctification through the Spirit of God if you believe that you are accepted in the beloved if you believe that I am a part of the family of God if you believe Jesus died for you on the cross 2,000 years ago if you believe your names are written in the book of life if you believe that you are not a power of hell you are belonging to heaven if you believe you are seated at the right hand of God the power of the Lord you are entitled to have an access into this area too hallelujah here is a story of a man who is making a bold prayer. Yesterday we heard money is a good thing if it is in the right hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you missed out yesterday to put it in one simple line. Money is not evil. Money is good provided if it is in the right hands. Here is a man who is born in captivity, who is born in a curse, who is born as a pain, who has been spoken as the one who causes pain, who has been put down by his father and mother, especially by the mother. But he is about to make a bold prayer. And he said, Thou would bless me indeed. How many of you tonight will make a bold prayer? I don't care what you are going through. Make a bold prayer tonight that He would heal me. He would set me free. 
Even tonight, some of you listening through the net, make a bold prayer. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, the power of God will even move through the camera. I was listening to a man of God who made a prayer in 1990 in the camera. I happened to go through that and he said, there is somebody sitting there and watching me who has a problem in the right vein of your back. In 1990, my healing, hallelujah, praise the Lord. God saw my healing in the 1990s. Come on somebody tonight. He will not miss your healing. He will not miss your deliverance. He will not miss your breakthrough. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You might miss him. You might have missed him. But tonight I have a good news for you. If you are here tonight, he will not miss your breakthrough. He is a faithful God. Hallelujah. Here is a man who is making a bold prayer. Tonight somebody here who make a bold prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know which area in your life that you're questioned for your faith. But standing there, make a bold prayer. It is said that Napoleon Bonaparte was fighting battles and conquering nations and he was visiting his soldiers. One soldier came in front of him and asked him, once Napoleon came in front of the soldiers and, and asked them, what do you want? And one soldier said, I want the island of Malta. Those days asking the king like that, equal to losing your head. And the other soldier said, shall we cut off his head? And Napoleon says, don't cut him, don't kill him, don't harm him. I will give him the island of Malta because he made a bold prayer. When nobody was willing to ask me that, he asked me. Hallelujah tonight. Praise the Lord. Tonight, don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Don't be belittled by your past. Make a bold prayer. I don't know what is on your past. Even God doesn't care. Hallelujah. Only person who cares about your past is the devil. Tell him that about his future. Tell him he is the one who is going to hell. Tell him he is the one who is going to be punished. Tell him your place is in heaven. Make a bold prayer tonight. Hallelujah. Here is Jabez boldly praying for God to bless him and enlarge him. And God said, the Bible says, God answered his prayer. Children of God need to pray. Especially tonight as we are ministering on the finances. You have to pray concerning your finances. You need a house. You need to pray. You look at your livelihood and said, I would have a one bedroom house. That's all that you get. Make bold prayers. Come on somebody Some of you the Holy Spirit for saying If you make a bold prayer tonight He is going to fire you from your present job And he is going to give another job oh, yeah. That will be an equal to <laughs> To the prayer that you have made Come on somebody tonight Come on somebody tonight Come on somebody tonight We give you praise We give you glory Hallelujah. Your children need jobs. Ask him. You want God to prosper you. Ask him. Sometimes believers go through guilt of whether it's okay to ask God for finances because there is a lot of talk going. You are guarded. But there are in the Pentecostal circles, in the church circles, there are a lot of people. Even if you are introduced to one of those ignorant people who says, oh, you are preaching a prosperity gospel. I don't know what that gospel is. We do not preach that gospel either. We only preach a gospel that is in the Bible. We don't preach a prosperity gospel. We preach a gospel that follows 
those who follow Jesus hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord other day I was ministering and I I said sometimes people take John and Peter said gold and silver have I none what I give I give it to you concerning healing was the context of that scripture he said gold and silver I we don't need gold and silver gold and silver cannot heal you this is a problem that you have it from the time where you were in the mother's womb what will heal you it is in the name of Jesus get up and walk even tonight there are people who need healing God is releasing supernatural healing over their body and rebuke that spirit of sickness Receive it for your family members. If you don't need one, receive it for your fathers. Receive it for your mothers. Thank you, Jesus. But then in Haggai, he said, gold is mine. Silver is mine. For what? To build the house of God. If you want to make an impact to the nations of the world. If you make to for build a church that will impact, hallelujah, every center in the economy from politics to education to hospital to orphanage, hallelujah, if you want to take the gospel hallelujah, to the entertainment, you need gold, you need silver, you need to make an impact. So there is nothing called prosperity gospel. Hallelujah. Bible says he delights in the prosperity of his children. If you pray, if you believe, if you ask Him, He will give us our heart's desires and He will bless our generation. Hallelujah. Two parts to this message. One is to pray for supernatural debt cancellation. Number two is lay foundation for how you can pray for your finances. If you want to title this talk, Principles for Praying for Money. These are the principles that you use to pray for money because there are so many people who are in debt some of it is our inherited debt their parents left them nothing but debt some are married to debt you got to marry to a spouse who are in debt some people into got into debt because they kept comparing and got into the comparison trap they kept comparing themselves with the family next door Someone else bought a house, someone else bought a car, someone else bought a, went for a holiday, someone else bought a boat, so I also need to buy. They had money you didn't have. And you got into a debt trap. How many of you say, I don't need to compare with anyone? Comparison is a trap. You have to be assured that what God has kept for you, God has kept for you. Ninika Devam Vachada. I told you at the beginning when you worship the Lord the tire the people of the world who your wealth is hiding they will come and release it over your life all that you need to do is to worship the Lord somebody tonight hallelujah hallelujah Proverbs 13 says the wealth of the unrighteous is stored for the righteous Oh, hallelujah. The wealth of the sinner is stored for the righteous. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, that's not fair. But I don't know it. I claim it. You worship. Sinner works hard. You worship. You get it. I'm not saying not to work hard. But I'm saying there's a promise like that. Hallelujah. Bible says when Egypt... Israel left Egypt. They took their gold, they took their silver. Every wage that they did not get for 400 years. 400 years. Manual labor. Israelites were kept under manual labor. Not giving a penny off. Making them hard work, hard, hard work. Labor, labor, labor. And for 400 years, Hallelujah. They were given little bit of, of money for their livelihood. Hallelujah. But when they left Egypt through the blood of the Lamb, they plundered Egypt. God gave their salary with interest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody tonight. 
are you deprived tonight God is about to release glory to God your salaries your release is going to come with interest in the name of the Lord hallelujah if you begin to compare yourself amazingly it happens more among believers now that comes in because we don't have an attitude called gratitude we don't thank the Lord enough that's why we get into this trap if you celebrate what God is doing in your life tonight you will not get into a comparison trap hallelujah hallelujah if you thank God for the little that God has given you and together with that if you celebrate somebody else's blessing Oh, Rabba Labas. Oh, it's easy to thank for the little that I have. I thank you, Lord. I am not like those people who have said, Lord, I am your humble servant. Thank you, Lord, for the little. That is not a big spiritual prayer. The spiritual prayer is this. I thank the Lord for the little that you have given me. And I thank the Lord for giving much to my brother. For it is no secret for what God can do. If He has done it for others, He will do it for me. With arms wide open, He will pardon me. It is no secret what God can do tonight. Hallelujah. Your breakthrough will come when you celebrate somebody else's home, somebody else's car, somebody else's travel. Your breakthrough and your blessing is hidden in thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thanking the Lord for all that He is doing. Hallelujah. I will go fast tonight. The first principle for praying for money. Number one, we must be in right standing with God. Everybody say, we must be in right standing with God. Not just coming to church, going from church, but a real right standing with God. If you have the Bible, open your Bible to John 15 and the 7th verse. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you will and it shall be done to you. If you abide in me, means it's conditional. If you abide and my words abide, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done to you. Abiding means dwelling in Him. Not drifting away. Not drifting in out of a relationship with God. But you are choosing to dwell in Christ. Grace is for that. To dwell in Christ. Grace is to see Christ. Grace is to keep the Lord above everything. Grace is to get closer to Jesus and away from sin. Grace is to get closer to everything the Lord has for. To abide, make you abide with Him all the days of your life. Amen. Many people are comfortable coming to church, attending a meeting, attending a 10 day and going off. But the reason why you are coming here is to abide and to dwell in Him. If my words abide in you, while you are sitting here, most of us, it is our Father's words that are abiding in us. Not the heavenly fathers, our earthly fathers, our earthly mothers, what our husband said, what our friends said, what other people said, are the words that are abide, what my boss said. Those are the words that are abiding with you. You have to abide in His words. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Hallelujah. My word abides in you. Me means you are thinking, meditating and feeding on God's word. Pastor was saying that he went to a man of God's house. And as I was speaking with him, he saw a cuckoo clock coming out saying a scripture. John 3.16 No wonder. Every time to remind of the breathe scripture of God. 
Hallelujah. Even tonight, what I'm trying to do tonight for the Spirit of God is to cancel out every other word that is pounding in your mind of defeat, of limitations, of mediocrity, of negativity, of revenge, of hurt, of fight, of what you did not get, of what you lack, all those pounding thoughts to leave your life. And there is the word of God, the word of life, the word of Jesus, the word that will abide with you and you abide and then you ask whatsoever. And he said, I will do it. Number two, our requirement must be based on Christ's name and God's reputation. Our requirement must be based on Christ's name and God's reputation. Aditya Kairiyam, Eshuva Itta, Ninda Bendam. Yandamata Kairiyam, Ninda Avisham, Deva Tinda Chayayilum, Sadrishatilum, Avenda Namathinum, Mahatta Ola Vidatilla, Agirang Larikanam. John 13, 14, 13 to 6, 14 says, John 14, 13 to 14 says, And whatsoever you will ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. The name of Jesus is powerful. Look at two people and say, The name of Jesus is powerful. Say it, you mean it. After giving you the burgers and banana fritters, no strength. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say there is power in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anything that you ask in the name of Jesus, that doesn't mean that you can ask the Lord to make you win a lottery ticket. Hallelujah. That is not according or it was not a reflection of God's character. Amen. Taking a lottery is not the reflection of God's character. Lottery has to do with luck. Luck comes from the word Lucifer. Never say you are lucky. You're fortunate. That's a blessing. Luck comes from the word Lucifer. Hallelujah. We have nothing to do with Lucifer. Hallelujah. Look at two people and say, we have nothing to do with Lucy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The reason you also don't take a lottery ticket is also because you don't want to win in somebody else's loss. Amen. God does not want that. It is not a reflection of God's character or nature. So when you pray, don't ask for somebody else's. Husband or wife? That is not a Lord's character. After five years of marriage, somebody came and told me, Pastor, the Lord is showing that to marry you. I said, get out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't say, oh, you also got that in prayer. Huh? I all don't. Hallelujah. So when you pray, it should bring glory to God. This kind of prayers doesn't bring glory to God. Many a time we are only concerned about our name, ourselves, our things. Our prayers should bring, glorify the name. He will answer you. He will do it so that Father shall be glorified in the Son. Our prayer should be glorifying God. Hallelujah. You have to take your eyes off yourself and say, Lord, I want to glorify your name. I want you to glorify your name through my finances. Especially if we are listening to the talk on finances. You say, I want to glorify you, Lord, through my finances, in my children's life, through my future, 
through all that i do i want to glorify you ninne magatha padutalam ende prarthaneyilude your request is based on christ's name and god's reputation so that when you do something you know i am doing this because he asked me to do it i am doing this because i know god wants me to pray this hallelujah you get into trouble every time that you take the lord and make prayers and make desires and make notes every time you do something that he asked you to do he will show up he is only entitled he is only promised to show up when you do what you are asked to do otherwise he won't show up i know god will show up these 10 days because he asked me to make this 10 days a prayer i cannot look at somebody else's holiday calendar and who was there who is not there if you want it be here hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord if they had an operation i had a back ache but god said do it i do it till two days back i could not move it i do all the physiotherapy i do all the exercise in the morning so that i can st- stand strong in the evening hallelujah so tonight make prayers that god wants you to have financial release yes that is his will and you say lord give me a financial release for your glory and he will do it hallelujah amen do you want jesus you want to do what jesus wants to do or what you want to do it's a decision you should make sometimes you don't have confidence to pray because you are doing exactly what you want to do and not following the lord then goodness and mercy will not follow you hallelujah number 3 the principle for praying for money our appeal or prayer must fulfill god's word and his clear will nammada prarthana deiva vajanavum deiva hitho vansirichirikanam 1 john chapter 5 14 to 15 and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hear us and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him hallelujah when we pray is it there in the word it is god's will i have to disappoint some of you some of your prayers are never going to be answered in this age or the age to come because it's not there in the word do you want to pray for your house pray it is there in god's word it is god's will do you want to be healed it is there in the word of god it is his will he will give that house veedinu vendi prarthichu sambathiyathinu vendi prarthichu kudumba surakshanathikku vendi prarthichu you want to pray protection over your house god will do it he will apply the blood of the lamb you can apply the blood and the passover lamb's blood will chase the destroyer away you can apply the blood over your spirit soul and body over your finances it is his will hallelujah number 4 are you here tonight church are you here can i go into the next word can i go a little deeper you gave me the permission now listen to me follow scriptural principles in obtaining funds follow scriptural principles in obtaining funds 2 corinthians chapter 9 and the 6th verse but this i say he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully you want to prosper you cannot be stingy you can pray all that you want but you won't prosper in the way god wants you to if you want to prosper bible says he who soweth sparingly will reap sparingly you can pray fast for 40 80 days but you're not going to reap 
what you have not sown we live in a culture where people want to reap what they have not sown one person came to pastor and said pastor i was sick in the body and nobody came to visit me and pastor asked him how many times have you gone to somebody else's house when they were sick sometimes you know he said oh so that person doesn't come to my house this person doesn't come to my house but you are stationed in your house you don't go and visit anybody hallelujah praise the lord are you with me church what you sow you want everybody to appreciate but you don't appreciate anyone you want everybody to be your friend but you are the most unfriendly man hallelujah you want everybody to appreciate your preaching but when somebody else is preaching you will be doing <laughs> he you sow it ah. oh, only 8 o'clock ah. that's what you reap when you take your business to somebody somebody ah. what you sow you reap hallelujah sowing is not tithing tithing whether we like it or not is holy unto god it is the 10% percent that or oh, whatever you have whatever you want 10% percent belongs to god so you cannot negotiate with god on your tithe just as every other baptism is not negotiation it's an obedience same way tithing no negotiation it's an obedience sowing is above that it is called offerings in the bible just for people who are listening to me the first time pastor is not preaching to make money i don't want your money i don't need your money by the grace of god i have a lot of money okay i am telling you this to make you rich to make you prosper and to make you have the blessing of god hallelujah praise the lord when you give tight you're only giving to what actually rightfully his sowing is apart from your tight amen how many of you have ever seen you sow a seed and you reap a forest you can't expect a harvest out of a small seed i want one crore of blessing here is my one rupee if you sow like that you will reap mosquitoes when you ask god for something what he will do is he will give you a seed you ask for a car he will give you a seed what do you do with a seed will bring that car to you you ask him for a house he might not give you a house he will give you a seed within that seed is the house let me biblically explain it genesis 1 28 and 29 genesis 1 28 and 29 and god bless them and god said unto them be fruitful which means god bless them and said that word bless means to empower to prosper empower to prosper be fruitful which means to be productive and multiply is having many much multiply having children multiplying lot of things so god said be fruitful bless them and said be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish and the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living that moveth upon the earth and god said behold i've given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat 
God planted a garden. How many of you know God plants things? Amen. And He expects you to be fruitful. And what did He say? I will give you a seed. And you have to put that seed into the ground for the harvest to come. You hold that seed, no forest, no garden. Today, God is giving us the grace to let go. Yesterday, I told you, tight-fisted people are anxious people. Hallelujah. People who let go are calm people. Amen. During Noah's time, God told him to get every animal pair by pair. Not two males, a male and a female. Why? Because there was a seed inside of them. The earth is going to be destroyed. The Lord destroyed the earth and God wanted to have reproduction and replication. So he gave a pair, a seed was put inside so that they will again populate and multiply the earth. See, look at me. God could have created, said, let there be light, let there be sun. Let there be moon. He could have done it a second time. Do you think he's less powerful? Second time? He could have done the same thing. But he didn't do it. He gave them a seed. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Today that's the way he prospers you. He gives you a seed. A seed contained with itself. The supernatural DNA for harvest and reproduction. Just imagine... If Noah ate up that seed, no harvest will come. Imagine you are a planter. Look at somebody's face tonight. Just want to make it a little interesting. Look at somebody's face. Imagine that per- person is a planter. And you go to a shop and say, imagine the person next to you is a shop. And you say, I want a harvest of tomatoes. Would you say that? You will say, can you give me seed of tomatoes? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You take that seed, you go put it into the land and then the harvest will come out of it. Nothing comes out if you eat the seed. So many people don't even tithe. That's why you are under financial curse. Money might be coming, but not the blessing on your finances. Some people, your businesses work, work, all that. I'm speaking about the blessing on your money. The flow, a current, a direction. But after tithe, you learn to sow. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? When you start to tithe, you will give the faith to sow. Some people are tithing, but you're not getting the release that you want because God is, wants you to start sowing. Praise the Lord. Are you with me, church, tonight? Is this getting on to you? If you are a consistent sower, able to release the right seeds when God asks you to, you will see supernatural doors, blessings opening over your life. I leave it to you. Bible says God gives a seed to the sower. Isn't it amazing? God does not even said He gives seed to the born again Christian. He gives seed to the sower. Pastor said when he stepped out for full time ministry, left all the job, I mean all the properties, everything that he had, and he left the Lord. He said, "How will I build my house?" And he, God said, "I'll teach you how to sow the seed." He gives sow seed to the sower, not to the preacher, not to the born again, but to the sower. 
and that changed his life it is impossible for somebody to sow a seed and not to see a harvest hallelujah in the beginning of every year practically you should ask the lord how much should i sow for the work of the lord hallelujah let me tell you he will give you if you willing to sow that seed i remember once i was listening to a talk and god said to sow a seed and i said i don't have that much to sow and then i told if you give that money i will sow it next day somebody came to me with that exact money and i knew it was a seed and i sowed that seed before or soon after a year the greatest financial breakthrough came into my life hallelujah because i recognized which was the seed Pastor was saying that he, in his life, every year he would ask, "This is the amount he wants to sow," and God would give it to him. He said, first year he asked when he understood this principle, God gave the exact amount. Second year asked, God gave the exact amount. Third year he asked. While he was asking the third year, he said, "I want to build a house. Maybe you know, Lord, I will give you a little less." But he happened to give. the most on the third year and the fourth year how many of you say i have given first year second year and he said on the fifth or the sixth year he experienced a financial shift praise the lord hallelujah he started receiving finances in another level hallelujah what i'm trying to say is how many of you here think that the day that you sow the seed you will reap the harvest you won't you have to wait you have to water the seed speaking over that seed praying over that seed hallelujah praise the lord and then the harvest will come hallelujah a seed might leave your hand but it will never leave your life anything that you give it to the lord will never leave your life it will always come back to your life as a harvest of blessing hallelujah are you with me church here sometimes you have one house sometimes you have two house and you are a, lord is telling you to buy a third house are you asking why the lord said it is the response to the seed that you gave i am not only blessing you i'm blessing i'm keeping for your children too mm. come on somebody tonight the seed that leaves your hand will not leave your life will always come back to you as a harvest of blessing to you ecclesiastes chapter 11 1 to 4 cast your bread upon the waters cast your bread upon the waters for thou shall find it after many days give a portion to seven and also to eight for thou knowest not what evil shall come upon the earth If the clouds be full of rain they empty themselves upon the earth and if a tree fall forward the south or toward the north in the place where the tree falleth there it shall be he that observeth the wind shall not sow and he that regardeth the cloud shall not reap 
God is telling to cast upon the bread upon the waters some of the translation says cast your money upon the waters do not keep looking at your circumstances and if keep say, keep saying oh i've done enough i uh, that's all that i need he says cast it upon to the six to the seven don't look at the circumstances whether it's the right time or not just ask the spirit of god tell it keep sowing why because the way to your financial deliverance is through sowing that's why the lord is saying that we are living in a different economy that which is of the world the people of the world will board their blessings hold their blessings we release our blessings so we will have more you can decide you want to hold it you have to understand one out of one die and you are not going to take all this thing to heaven heaven does not need all this when you go to heaven you're going to see the harvest of what you sown here not only here oh, but in heaven too hallelujah every time god blesses you with bread although you feel it's a good to eat you said i will take a portion of it and i will cast it every time god gives you something new you can either eat it full or just let go a part of it to the lord and see he will multiply it i'm teaching you something tonight throw into the river of the holy spirit and you will always see in it returning back hallelujah luke chapter 6 and the 38th verse because of the lack of time the bible says give and it shall be given unto you a good measure pressed down and shaken together running over shall give into your bosom for the, for the same measure that you use shall be it shall be measured to you again what did the lord said the same measure you give a cup full of seed a cup full will come back you give a jug full of seed a jug full will come back the same measure you use the same will come back you use a barrel full of seed a barrel will come back the same measure you give a small measure expect a small return what is our problem we give little we expect more hallelujah listen come that god will test you at the seed time it's called seed test everybody say seed test god won't test you with cancer god will test you with a he won't give you a cancer with nobody in this church sitting i cancel that spirit of cancer i rebuke it nobody will get a cancer in the name of jesus let that fear leave your life god will give you a seed and whether you're going to be faithful it before the harvest comes amen some of you listening to the word only if you want to do it do it don't leave the church because you i spoke this word okay <laughs> hallelujah 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 9 to 12 is it coming into your heart tonight this is the most interesting part coming to the most interesting part now but as touching brotherly love you need not that i write to you for you yourselves are taught of god to love one another and uh, indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are on macedonia but we beseech you brethren that you increase more and more that you study to be quiet oh that's a interesting word study to be quiet and to do your own business one voice in say mind your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you that you may walk honestly toward them that are without that you may have lack of nothing hallelujah so the lord is saying increase more and more how how be quiet don't complain grumble or murmur not grammar murmur look at somebody and say don't complain don't grumble and don't murmur 
Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't say this. Praise the Lord. Then it says, mind your own business. Don't poke your nose in somebody else's business. Tell somebody, don't poke your nose <laughs> into my business. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Understand in the right way, okay? If your business is dirty, I might poke my nose. Praise. Hallelujah. Basically saying, give them some space. Amen. Don't judge them. Give them some space. Number three, it says, work with your own hands. You need to work to prosper. Look at somebody and say, you need to work. You need to go to office on time. You must be the first one to leave the... I mean, you, not, you should not be the first one to leave the office. You should be the first one to come to the office and last one to leave. Amen. In the church also. Don't be idle. Work, work, work. Praise the Lord. Then it says, together with all that, be honest, be straightforward. Be honest and straightforward. Then you will lack nothing. That's the place we want to go. Lack or debt is a dangerous thing. Amen. We don't want to be in lack or in debt. As a matter of fact, the very word mortgage, mortgage means death grip. The Hebrew word is neshek, which means to bite of the serpent. When you take money on interest, it is like a serpent biting you. Believers take loans, mortgage their property and they are struggling to come out of it because they are bitten by the serpent. And tonight in the name of Jesus, I command every poison, every serpentine spirit, every serpentine biting over your finances be broken in the power of the holy blood in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, put your hands. I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing of God destroy the yoke. Remove that burden. Release you from that grip tonight. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's like you are giving your neck to the devil. He saps your strength. He saps your energy. If you don't have a debt tonight, you are prosperous. Praise the Lord. You might not even have savings, but if you don't have a debt, you are prosperous. God can build you up from there. Don't take a car and a bike paying huge interest, which is out of your grip. Don't take housing paying another amount of loan. While you are paying one loan, you take another loan. And you take that loan to pay this loan. And you ask your friend to take another loan. Now if you take that money and pay your loan. And you are in loan, your friend is in loan. It's a debt trap. Hallelujah. It's called rolling money. Start business. You roll money. Taking credit card to pay loans. Then paying one credit card with another other credit card. Praise the Lord. That is how Arthur used to do it. He had 16 credit cards when he came to the Lord. Now how many you have? No. No credit card. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. God's way of prospering is not that. We take student loan, house loan, car loan and act by faith. Praise the Lord. 
Come on somebody tonight. You have to trust the Lord to provide for you. If he doesn't, wait on the Lord. Meditate on the Lord. Hallelujah. For David said, I have not lost heart. If I would have not believed, I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have lost heart. Hallelujah. Don't lose heart. You will also see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Hallelujah. I quickly go. Number five, the principle you ask, you must ask in faith. Mark 11, 24 says, Therefore I say it to you, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have them. Amen. That word has to get into your spirit tonight. Whatever you ask in prayer, you have to believe. It is when the word of God goes into your heart that it manifests in promise. Amen. It manifests in blessing when you get the revelation of God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask in faith for you to be set from death. If you obey the scripture, by the end of this year, you will be amazed to see what will happen into your finances. That was a prophetic word pastor gave. If you believe, hallelujah. If you believe, hallelujah. This word, whatever you ask in prayer, believing. Vishwasicha. Hallelujah. And I end with this. 2 Kings chapter 4, 1 to 7. We'll read it together. If you have a Bible. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha saying, Thy servant, my husband is dead. And thou know that thy servant did fear the Lord and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What sh shall I do for thee? Tell me. What? Hast thou in the house, she said, thy handmaid had not anything in the house but a pot of oil. Then he said, go borrow the vessels abroad. Of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and open thy sons, and thou shalt pour out into thy vessels, shall set aside which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her openers, upon her sons who brought the vessels unto her, and she poured out. And it came to pass. When the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told me the man of God. And he said, Go and sell the oil. Pay thy debt. And live thou and children out of the rest. Here are a few principles. Here is a man. If you understand the Bible, it's speaking about Obadiah, the servant of the Lord. is dead. He was in the church. He was in the school of prophets with prophet Elisha but this man's finances were affected because he never made plans to provide for his wife and children even if you are serving the Lord you have to make provision for your family this man never made plans he did not prepare after her husband died this woman had just a small jar of oil and she is bringing huge vessels now a small jar of oil and the Lord is saying take this glass of water which is easier he's saying pour it into the bucket we could understand if the Lord asked the Lord told us to take the bucket and pour it into the glass the Lord is saying take the small jar of oil and pour it into the bucket and it will become full that needs faith hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord he's saying faith is when you know that with the glass of water you can fill the buckets. What you have, you can come out of the debt. Oh. You can come out of your debt through what you have in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. She began to fill the vessels and brought into the prophet and prophet asked her to sell it and repay her debt first and live on the rest and the bible says they prospered just a glass of oil set them free from debt and they prospered what you have can bring you out of your debt the first thing to do is to get out of the debt the first thing that you have to pray is to get out of the debt there is something in your house that you can sell. Is it okay to sell? It is okay. 
there are some stuff in your house that you need to sell to get out of the debt are you listening to me tonight i told somebody this that person did not and got into trouble it's the right thing to do sell it and get out of the debt but most of us don't do it because we are attached to stuff oh this tv how will i sell it yeah you are paying emi 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 your children does not have fees to go to school why because you are paying emi for your tv it's a status symbol you're attached to it the lord is saying get rid of it just because you see a big tv in somebody else's house if you can't afford it buy a black and white tv and be happy if you have a debt sell off pay those installments and then from there god will prosper you if god prospered this woman he will do the same for you she had a little oil but initially she was not willing to let it go because there had sentimental value over that oil hallelujah when she placed minimum value to it and let it go the lord blessed her amen god used that oil to make the debt pay with a little jar of oil he canceled the debt amen hallelujah so tonight principles of praying for money you might have sentimental value for things but if you have so many things that is making you into debt sell off get rid of your debt first amen hallelujah i pray that his word will bless you god bless you